another Nile water monitor. A big one. I'm gonna have to be quick. These things are fast. One thing to grab the lizard, but I'm in crocodile territory. Trap right up close next to the water. I'm gonna use this route to try and get back up the embankment. How's this? I've got him. Have a look at this. What a beautiful lizard. You're all right, mate. I'm not sure who's got who. Let go now, mate. Let go there, buddy. Have a look at this. For claws. I tell you what, they've got a great set of claws and they need them. They raid birds' nests, they dig up crocs' eggs, and you can see this one here. This is a full-grown Nile monitor. Beautiful lizard, beautiful set of armory. <laughs> they dig in by crikey. And have a look at that head structure. Now, he's not an aquatic lizard. I guess you'd call him semi-aquatic. They live in and around the water. They swim like a crocodile, under and on top of the water. They can't hold their breath for over a couple of minutes, so they've got to come back up. The Nile croc and monitor are the two largest reptiles. Now, this bloke relies on the Nile crocodile, A, for protection, and B, a food source. This bloke, he'd pick up neonate crocodiles like they're going out of fashion. Any little tackers that he could get, whack, swallow them down while they're still kicking. And of course, the eggs. They love to eat croc eggs. That's one of their favorite food sources. And they whoosing, whoosing, use that forked tongue to locate a viable nest, dig down. Mind you, they've got to beat mummy. You can see here, that's his ears. They've got quite good hearing, nostrils, right on top of his head and their eyesight is acute especially for movement anything moves within a couple of hundred meters whoom, they'll pinpoint it and go at it have a look at this tail i've got to i've got to impress upon you just how wild that tail is look at that so that makes him nearly six feet long and you can see the compression in that tail see how it's really thin up the top powerful tail very powerful swimmers and you know they shed their skin, just like other reptiles. You can see his skin coming off here. Starting to shed his skin. And he'll have some beautiful skin coloration under there when he sheds all his skin off. He thinks that by playing dead, look at him. He's playing dead, this lizard. What a great technique. The first thing they do is fight like fury. And then when they think they're beaten, they play dead. Isn't that interesting? Well. Thanks very much, mate, for sharing this time with me. One other point that I didn't tell you is these things have teeth, like sharks, razor sharp teeth, and they lacerate. I mean, they can grab a snake and tear it in half. A young crocodile, bite it, tear it in half. No problem at all, razor sharp teeth. You wouldn't want to get bitten because not only have they got razor sharp teeth, they carry a few bacterias in their mouth which would certainly inflict a nasty injury. There you go, mate. Yes! Big Nile monitor, woohoo! As we get past the giant herds of hippos, we get into the thickest number of crocodiles I've ever seen. This is what sets the Nile crocodile apart from any other crocodile species in the world. Hundreds, probably thousands of them congregated. And here's what's attracting them, a hippo carcass. It's probably a casualty of the fighting. You can see the bloody marks around its neck. Looks like tusk wounds. I'm gonna crawl up on my belly to get right fair smack into the action. This is what I've come to see, the wild behaviour of the Nile crocodile. They've got an incredible social structure where they'll congregate around a food source. This is it. I've got a sneak right up there on my belly. They're a little nervy about my presence. I use my backpack to break up 
the formation of my body. It's working. Look at this, I'm close. This croc's gotta be nearly 14 feet in length. And I'm less than 10 feet from it. Check it out. Crocodiles as far as the eye can see. There's probably 50 or more mounting in front of me right around the carcass. And there's another 50 at least out back from them. complex social structure. Look at them, tearing into the entrails of the hippo. Look at them, they're coming in. There must be a hundred crocodiles in on it. They make me look like a dwarf. It's like a clash of dinosaurs. You go, fight, fight. It's only a small dispute. There's no blood spilled. In amongst all this turmoil and commotion and thrashing and jaws and heads hitting together, it's wild, but it's organised. Clashing heads, clashing teeth. This huge frenzy of death rolls. This is the social structure at its peak. Oh. Out of all that, and not one croc is bleeding. There's not a croc in this mob that's under 10 feet. Look at the size of them. Dinosaurs. How's the way they come alongside and tear it out of each other's mouth? Unreal. You know, this looks wild. It looks so wild, all these dinosaurs mixing it up. Reptilian evolution at its peak. Oh, look at this, look at this. Crack. It just looks like they're going at it. Oh. Heck, the carcass is going. They're so preoccupied feeding that they don't even notice the hippo carcass is floating away. Don't worry, they'll pick it up later. Check it out. How's this? They don't even care. I'm here, but they've got no idea of it. Check, look at this. This has been the most awesome thing in my entire life. Have a look at this. Check out behind me. If I was James Bond, I could run over. Check them out, like stepping stones. The funny thing is, in the fight, they forgot the hippo carcass has floated off. It's floating way down the river there now. But don't worry, they'll track it down and find it, and they'll eat again. The feast of the Nile crocodile.